He said the year 2020 is going to be the year for success. Success of his people, success of his projects, success of everything that he wants to get done in uh, yours and my life and all of our lives. And it's very important that uh, we understand that our focus needs to be on success. Let me say this to begin with, as much as you fail in your life, as many struggles as you've actually had can never compare to the success that God has ordained for you. Amen. Now, you have to get rid of all of these isms and schisms and philosophies and warfares in your mind and imagination. Someone lay your hand on your head right now and just say, Lord, get it all out of my mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, according to 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5, that every, uh, every argument, every vain thing, every devil, every wrong voice, every negative ism and schism, every adversity, every foolishness that's in men, by devils or by themselves, who knows, who cares? It's all coming out in Jesus' name. Say it's coming out. It's coming out. Now, let, lay your other hand on your head. Take your other hand and put it up there and just say, Lord, Lord. fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me, Ghost. fill me with your wisdom. Fill me, fill me with your knowledge. Fill me, fill, me fill me with your understanding. Fill me with your discernment. Fill me, fill me with your revelation. Fill me, fill me with your enlightenment. Fill me, fill me with your might, fill me, fill me with your, your, your wisdom, your, wisdom. your understanding. Your elevation, your illumination, your own imagination. And Lord, I am brilliant. Fill me with your brilliance. Let me think like a brilliant one. Let me be far ahead of all the people that I know and see. Let me be far, far ahead than anybody I know or see. And I will lead the way. And I will lead the troops. And I will lead the pack. And I will be an advancer. And I'll be the head and not the tail. I'll be above only and not beneath. I'll be rich and not poor. I'll be successful and never failing. I'm blessed and no longer cursed. I'm favored. I am loved. I am liked. Beyond my wildest imagination. Beyond what I thought of before. It's going to be even more than that. Say this, what I pray for, my Lord, my God, my King, wonderful Lord Jesus, my great boss, my greatest friend, Holy Spirit, the one who has all victory inside of him, greater than I even imagined, I'm going to experience honor and favor and open doors and riches and wealth and great healing and great health nothing shall get in my way it'll be astounding and how highly I'm favored and Lord give me the tough skin put a force field around me that even when people get jealous even when the devil hates they can't penetrate this because you're all around us. You're all around me. Lord, you are the Lord of my house. You are the Lord of my way. You are the Lord of everything in my life. You're the Lord of my thinking. You're the Lord of my, my well-being. You're the Lord of my well-being. Everything I need and want is already done. God, you promised. God, we heard prophecies. Grandiose prophecies. Grandiose prophecies. You've spoken them through your vessels. And many times, we've taken the recording and not even been replay because we were too nervous about how great it was. Sometimes that happened. Yeah, it even happened to me. I'm saying for myself. But you need to play it over and over. Go dig those up again and rehearse them. Go, go, go play them again. And get impregnated. 
Say, Lord, I'm getting impregnated with your vision and all the power of all your words, the content of all your words. Everything that you said is coming to pass in this season right now. As we step into this new year, and we step into 2020 now, we're crossing over from this old into the new greatness that you've ordained for me. And I'm going to prosper. I'm going to have wealth. Treasure is finding me. And I'm finding it. People that will help me are coming my way. The greatest help. Even things that will bring tears to our eyes. And we begin to cry because it's so good. It's really happening now. It's really going to happen now. And Lord, every, every man can be a liar. But you're a truth, you're a truth bearer. And whatever anybody said that was in any way condescending or negative toward us, it's cursed. It's not of you. It has no place. Come on, let's speak to it. We need to speak to everything. Lord, I say, Lord, I'm going to speak to everything in this season. We need to talk to everything. You think of something. We think of something. But then we don't speak to it. This is wrong. We need to talk to it. Father, everything you've said. I'm reminded of someone prophesied. I'm, I'm let, me, let me tell you something. I'm reminded of someone prophesied to me about a private aircraft for, for us. I'm speaking to that thing. It's coming to pass. I don't know how. I don't know everything about it. But we're going to need it to hop around. Yeah. Lift your hand. Someone said, that's too high. That's too big. No, it isn't because God said it. It wasn't, you know, uh, conjured up from our imagination. And that's not the first time we've heard that. Sometimes you think, what am I going to do with that? How much it costs just for the fuel? How much it costs? Who cares? God has the money. Lift your hands. Yeah. And what, we, what we need, we're going to have. The building that we need. Come on. T talk to a building for yourself. You need an office. You need a church. You need another house. You need real estate. Let's talk to it right now. Father, we speak. Say, Father, we speak to all properties that are needed and wanted by us. We claim them now in Jesus' name. They belong to us now in Jesus' name. Lord, we don't know how. We don't know exactly when, maybe. But we know that this is your will concerning us, that we own property, that we live in our own places, that we pay rent to no man. And Lord, all debts are being canceled in Jesus' name. The, the substance we need to be zero in debt is coming into our hands right now. And wherever we have debts, they're being canceled and zeroed out by the wealth and treasure that you're bringing into our hands in Jesus' mighty name. Father, the friends we need, the helpers we need, the workers we need, the relationships we need are all coming to us now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you for your favor. Lord, we thank you for your favor. I want to say it seven times. Lord, we thank you for your favor. Four, we thank you for your favor. Five, Lord, we thank you for your favor. Six, Lord, we thank you for your favor. Seven, Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your favor upon our life. Because favor produces prosperity. Favor produces friends. Favor produces miraculous things. And that's going to begin to flow. Father, I just felt a wave come behind me like a tingling, like, like, a, like a movement of a wave, a wind of the spirit blowing right now. If you need healing right now, now's the moment. Take the healing touch of God. You need deliverance from devils right now. The Lord is delivering people right now. You need deliverance from poverty and all kinds of oppression and fear. Be put, let it be broken off your life in Jesus' name right now. The favor of heaven is coming to you, my friend. In Jesus' mighty name right now. The wind and the spirit just blew. Just by the it's like a wave going out. Let it hit the airwaves. Let it go through the video. Let it go through the audio. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Karastole che ento osaka ea atsiko o che te se. 
Mansa ki luci kota amo senda robro steka icha la haya. Ken solo borra di sokon shatanda vasa katia ka. The entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance of thy spirit giveth us liberty. The entrance of your power gives us favor. The entrance of your glory gives us majesty. Oh, God, my God, I feel the presence of God here. The entrance of your glory gives us the majestic life, that majestic reality. We are kings and priests. We are kings on the earth. Ladies, your queens and priestesses. Amen. And thank you, Father, for the prophetic touch I release right now the prophetic touch of heaven upon every person that they'll also begin to see. They'll become seers. They'll become thinkers and then they'll become doers of what they see. The prophetic flow is being released upon many, many people. I hear the Lord saying this, I'm gonna touch you and you're gonna begin to see what's happening. I had an idea to wear a different suit today and somebody kept telling me, someone on my staff kept telling me, I see this black one, I see this black one, I see that. I said, no, I'm not wearing that. And sure enough, the other one, I tried it on. It still needs to be altered a little more because they're brand new. They've never been worn. They're virgin territory. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then I ended up having this on. See, that person was touched by the prophetic flow because they're closed. Lift your hands right now. That's just an example. It could be like that. You could think like that. You can think like that. You can have perfect precision of reality and thought. You can see things ahead of time. And you don't even realize you're seeing it. You don't even realize that an idea is also an instruction. An idea is also prophetic. A revelation. Think something you see that comes to your mind and your imagination. There's a flow in that from the Lord. And God wants us to live like that. Who was the master producer of that? It was Jesus himself. He only did what he saw the Father do and in vision form and what he heard the Father say in speech form. And he just saw, he listened, and he saw. He listened, and he watched. He watched the script, and then he just acted it out in the, in, in the flow of, the, uh, of his walk in his life. Hallelujah. And everything was 100% successful. Oh, wow. God. Success. The year of success. Are you ready for it? Hallelujah. Everything was 100% successful. Because he was in the spirit. Lift your hands and claim that right now. This is so powerful right now. I'm so aware of how powerful this is at this moment right now. And how the Lord just let me say that to just get to that master point right there about success is prophetic. Prophetic. The prophetic flow will lead you into success. The prophet Isaiah, I'm glad it wasn't John or Peter or James that said it. I'm glad it was a wild man prophet who wrote the longest book, 66 books, 66 chapters rather, because there's 66 books in the Bible. I'm glad it was a prophet. I'm proud of the prophetic. I'm proud of the prophetic office. Lift your hands. I'm proud to be a prophet of God. I don't mean in the pride sense. I mean, I'm honored. I'm privileged. I know the greatness and power of it. And flip on these preachers and talk against it. I think they don't understand. So what? Nobody died and made you the mayor. You're not the governor. Some of the governors are on their way to prison anyway. So praise the Lord. These days, huh? it's not so great to be a governor right now. You know, the heat is really on. I'm hearing from behind the scenes uh, an intelligence that uh, the government is really after people now. You think the media just tells a few stories. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. It's getting hot, and that's because of the prophetic word. Yeah. Lift your hand. Because Thomas Manton IV was sent by God on a mission to Africa to prophesy over the African nations, particularly the nation of Kenya more than others, that this anti-corruption move from heaven is happening. Amen. Guess what? Say what? What? It wasn't a pastor that did that. It wasn't the Reverend Bishop that was able to do that. Waiting for all the amens to die now. I know you're shocked. You look, some people look like you got freeze frame. 
there was a, a comedy movie, and then uh, the police said, freeze, you know? And in the movie, he jumped and turned into ice and was a statue, like this, freeze. Some of you look like you got that moment, you're having that moment right now. Lift your hands, let's pray. It, it, it wasn't the local regular church that did that in the spirit that's changing, that's going to change the lives and destiny of this generation and the future generations. The power of the prophetic office, I mean, to lead you into success, it's beyond even what you could imagine before. It's not some extraordinary sideline thing and, and, and I want to speak this to people that have made a mockery of the office of what we call the prophet with all kinds of foolishness. I just speak the judgment of God over that, that God would just wipe it out and Lord let your glory shine on your true prophetic voices and though the warfare be great at times Raise them and bless them. I pray that you'll make the prophets that you have real, the real ones, so rich. Yeah. Lift your hands. If they go anywhere they want to go, they don't even need an offering. They won't even have to tell anybody that. But whether they got one or not, they wouldn't care. I live like that. I'm shocked at the, how some people dishonor God by how bad they treat you. I'm shocked at that, but thank God I don't need them. I have another source. Yes. <laughs> He's called Jehovah Jireh, yes. the boss. I pray that, Lord, that you'll make your true servants so wealthy in this season. This is a prophetic word. And your entrepreneurs in business who love you with all their heart, that are right with you, living for you, walking with you, zealous for you. I pray and declare and I prophesy right now that you will bless them in ways and measures beyond what they can even comprehend right now. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, I have not seen, ear has not yet heard. God has those plans for you. Lift your hands if you can receive. There's such an anointing here. Yeah. Such a different kind of flow here today. It's that Ooh. prophetic grace, prophetic, Ooh. prophetic flow. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, I feel shocked for people that don't make it to the meetings. The devil just tricks them out of it. Or the, all the witchcraft that's been put on them by churches and families and situations and environments, they can't seem to make it. I can't tell you how many people write messages like, oh, they got done with church late. I know that's one. Because the church wants to keep people there as late as they can so they can't go anywhere else. That's another story. And then they get headaches. They got headaches. And then they're sick. And then they're, come to church, you'll get healed. Yeah. It's also a Sabbath principle. I don't know what it is right now more than ever before in my life. I've been in the ministry a long time, as some of you would know. I've been doing this a few minutes. I got born again 33 years ago, and I started in the full-time ministry about 22 years ago. Uh, it'll be 23 years in February uh, 2020. Turn me up just a little bit if you can, just a little if you can. And the Lord uh, has had me see a lot of things. I've been a lot of places, you know. I've been, but I've never felt the grace enough like I do right now to actually have a church Amen. and churches somebody better put those hands together and do some work right now come on come on come on come on come on you people are too tired wake up come on now this is huge h-u-g-e in the sky in the clouds in caps dot 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 Acronym, what could it mean? Someone write an acronym for that, H-U-G-E. Send me a nice acronym on that. I don't want to stop. I could write one right now, but I don't want to stop. Someone write me, it's huge. We need to have a church in London, praise the Lord. 
We need to have one in South Africa, glory be to Jesus. We need to have one in Uganda. Come on, somebody. We need to have several in Kenya. We need to have them in, well, I don't want to talk about West Africa right now. I'm feeling it's a bit like evasive right now in the spirit, so eluding me. Let, me. let me deal with that in another minute. And there's one time I met with a bunch of preachers and they were talking about making me the dean of a school there. And they never really, they were very unorganized. You know, they never really followed through with it. And I was ready to kind of dive in and say, let's set up here. And it just probably wasn't the time, but I think the time will come now. And the Lord, the Lord is having people invite me to their, their school things and all that, you know. And I, I'm reminded of a prophetic word the Lord spoke to me. And he said, son, I'm going to give you three schools, three types of schools. Three types of schools. I know what two of them are. The third one, I'm wondering. I think I know. But again, I, I can process this in my, in my prophetic self and imagination and my uh, subconscious or my memory. But I don't want to stop right now. Lift your hands. But the Lord... We, we, we have to bring these things up and not be wondering how much we have to obligate ourselves to it. We have to speak it. If God said it, I'm challenging you. Let me, let me not talk so much about so many details and all that. Let me teach. Right, I'm teaching right now. I'm speaking this. If God said it, write this down somewhere. If God said it, I need to repeat it. I need to replay it. I need to dig it up. I need to put it out. I need to stop being afraid. I need to stop procrastinating. Procrastination is tied to fear. Whenever you procrastinate, it's because you're afraid of something. You need to face fear head on. Write that down somewhere. I need to face fear head on and replace fear with faith. I need to replace fear with faith, with faith. F-A-I-T, good, good, F-I, good, F-A-I-T-H, make an acronym out of that. Fear, many have said, is like an acronym is false evidence appearing real. Are you glad I'm anointed to teach? When it's, I just get in the pulpit and it just flows all of this. I didn't have this in my mind before I came up the stairs. Praise the Lord. Some of you might have taken the elevator. I don't know. I took the stairs. Stair master, you know. I need a little bit. F-A-I-T-H. F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Like, it's not even real. It's not even reality. And yet, it's something that's making you afraid, but God has no part in it at all. <laughs> you ever had a dream It was so bad, and then you woke up and you went, oh my God, I'm rescued. I'm glad it was only a dream. Lift your hands. How many have ever had that? You had a dream, and you're having such a bad dream, and you were really in the middle of the, a very bad situation. And then you woke up. And you said, oh, it's okay. Thank God it wasn't real. It was something that was playing inside of you that you were seeing. But it wasn't real. Thank God. I had a dream this week one. It was bad. It was so bad. God, how did, what, I don't know what I ate, though. What happened? I don't know if I ate, ate too late. I had some, some chips and feta cheese. Or I, what the heck did I have, man? Jesus, too much pasta. I don't know what happened. And then we tried to make samosas, eh? And the samosas, now they're on the counter. And I thought, maybe we should put Christmas lights on them. Because they're so bad, you can't eat them. The chef didn't do them right. So I think we just, people just get shell-shocked. They just don't know, what do we do with these things? I feel bad if I just throw them all in the trash. But, so they kind of sit there in a box on the counter. You know, I was really marveling at this, yeah? And I thought, maybe we put some Christmas lights on them. Eh? Like, make them an ornament. Let them get real hard and then just light them up. Like, this is like a, a decoration for the kitchen. The samosas that were bad. Maybe I had two of them and they weren't OK. Lift your hands, praise the Lord. So I don't know what happened, but I was having a bad dream. Anyway, it's okay. Thank God for, thank God for money and more chickens. Praise the Lord. Because I eat chicken. I have chicken samosas. I don't eat the meat ones or the vegetable ones. Or that. I don't like those either. 
chicken breast, mince, you know, chicken breast, and you mince it up, and then you marinate it, and you wrap it, and put it in the air fryer. We're trying to figure out the methodology of how to get them really perfect. But thank God there's more chickens that died so we can live. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we pray a prayer. Thank God, Lord, for the chickens that died. Bless their sorry, sad lives. Sorry for them. But that we can live and eat chicken. Praise the Lord. And you go to the butcher and you get more, okay? And then another chef can come that can do it right. So there's hope. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's hope. Lift your hands. So, somebody, uh, an, uh, a preacher from Uganda wrote me yesterday, uh, or the day, night before, and said, what about South Sudan? I said, what about it? He said, what do you see? You see anything for South Sudan? Like he's had South Sudan in his heart. And I heard the Lord say, Write him back this. I wasn't going to be long. Didn't want to have a long, you know, episode about it. You know, like Elizabeth Taylor, when she married her seventh husband. She said, honey, I won't keep you long, when she was giving a speech, you know. And because, because she didn't. She, she got divorced again and married number eight. So she said to her seventh husband, Elizabeth Taylor, you know, the actress, honey, I won't keep you long. Oh, that's a joke. Praise the Lord. Okay. And uh, so I, I wrote this word. I said, there's hope. The Lord says there's hope. Lift your hand. He said, it's such a mess over there. I, I, and the Lord had already, before he told me that, we spoke after that. I wrote exactly that. I could show you in my phone. I hear the Lord, I hear this word hope, and I wrote it in caps. H-O-P-E. From messy situations that there'll be a turnaround. How many know it's happening in Kenya right now? It's about to happen more in Uganda. Because somebody just bought my plane tickets to go there and to have an event there, and I'm going to be there in just a few hours, praise the Lord, in Uganda again. I haven't been there in 12 and a half years after the Lord had me prophesy over the city of Kampala. This was in... You know, I, I got to share more of these testimonies because pe some people are, are, are giving me that feedback. You teach so much. You're, you're so intellectual. You're bringing so much revelation. I mean, can you just slow down a minute and tell some stories? Let us understand how it works. Praise the Lord. I, I take that as, as, a, as a good uh, counsel from a, a very brilliant friend who's Indian, by the way, an Indian person, very heady. When they start thinking too much, you almost have to get out of their way because they've just got so much going on. But they gave me this thought, and I thought, yeah, you know what? They said, explain the prophetic. Explain 30 years of walking in the prophetic. Explain it. And, and we're going to do that. We're going to make it into books. Praise the Lord. I'm also going to do a book. God help me to do it. From, from day one to day now of my life. It's been a very interesting place to live, by the way. But I don't pray it on everybody. Some people I wouldn't wish you to be in my life for five minutes because I don't know if you can handle, handle me or not. The people that are around me, please understand that I'm an intense cat, okay? I'm an intense big Simba. I'm not a joker. I got processes going on inside of me. If I look at it like I don't want to talk or I'm busy, leave me to it. I know what I'm doing. I'm also juggling things on like three continents of the world at one time, and you're just dealing with right here, right now. So don't try to put me into your perspective, okay? Just like observe, adapt, flow, all right? That's a good word right there, good training. Lift your hands. Training for raining. Sometimes you have something of such a big task to accomplish, you have to concentrate so deeply and so hard to figure out how to get it done. You need to have that time. I have to have a lot of time alone. I just have to. I, I can't be in the presence of people all the time. I have to break away and just sit by myself because that's when it, all the processes start working. So anyway, my life has been a very interesting place to live, to say the least. I think James Bond could also write uh, another movie sequel based on the happenings in my life. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to write a book about that. It'll touch the world. It'll help people. 
The other thing I want to do is I want to start a, 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 an evangelism department. Because I feel bad that some of my friends in America that win so many souls look at me shaking their head like, hmm, I don't like it. And I'm not really an evangelist. I, I used to think I was one when I first started preaching. Huh? And then I saw prophesying. Then revelation starts to come. Then miracles start to happen without me even speaking them. And then things begin to shift and change. I thought, is this the, is this the work of an evangelist? Is this, is this an evangelist mantle? No. And I begin to write down a list of things. I said, this is a prophetic. This is prophetic. This is prophetic. Evangelistic was like four or five points. And then I had like five pages of things that worked through me that were actually in the office of the prophet. So from early on, I began to understand more about that. But duh, I had an open book test that wasn't hard to figure out because the Lord Jesus Christ himself, somebody's going to, this is going to scare somebody, but get scared. And let God help you with your fear. It's okay. The Lord Jesus Christ himself appeared to me in an open vision in September of 1986 in New York City in my house. And the whole house disappeared, the ceiling opened, everything in the house was gone. Wow, I feel the glory right now. Received the touch. I, I feel there's impartation prophetically coming on people here in this auditorium, here in the studio, here, and also through the airwaves, however you're hearing this. God is, is releasing his, some of his prophetic grace upon you, such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk in a newness of life, knowing things, seeing things, hearing things, understanding things by the Spirit of God. Wow. Now, 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 you that are in the Spirit, even, I hope this comes through the, through the, through the broadcast. I hope this, this atmosphere here comes through. But just by just what's happening right now when I talk about it, you can tell it's real. Lift your hands. You can tell it really happened, can't you? You can feel it. Jesus didn't say, you know, believe everything I say just because I say it. He said, look at the works. Look at the manifestations and you'll know that I'm a prophet, that I'm the Messiah. You'll know that I've been sent by God because no man can do these miracles saved by the Spirit, except by the Holy Ghost. So the Lord came and appeared to me. I can tell you what he was wearing. He had the most amazing, I don't think I'd ever have a suit made like that. I don't think I would, because I feel like I'm stepping out of my boundary. So I'm, I'll never do it. Lord, in honor to you, Hopefully you could wear that garment. It's not for a man to wear. It was crimson red. It was the deepest, most luminescent royal blue and white all together. And it was seamless. And how it was put together, I don't know. It was blue, the deepest, most gorgeous blue you've ever seen. I don't know if I've seen a fabric on earth with that kind of glory in it the color, and crimson red, bright but dark, seeable but transparent at the same time. You know, it had this, and this white that was the whitest of the white. I don't think you can get something so white like that on earth. And his hair looked a bit dark, darker than mine. It was almost like brown, it was brown. And his beard was perfectly cut and brown. And his eyes were blue. And with blazing light coming out of them. And the fire, it was like there was fire behind him and angels 
a, a, a battalion, a troop of angels was behind, came behind him and he stood. And I bowed my head, I was sitting in the house and he bowed my head. He walked up to me and I just bowed my head. I felt like the bones in my body were melting almost. The fire, I can't explain it. And he laid his hands on my head and he spoke with the most melodic voice. It's like it had different intonations in his voice. It was the voice of a man, like, like, like how you'd hear me now, the straight voice. But it had a musical note and added to it. I can't explain it. And then it had like a, another dimension to it. It's like it was in three different, it was, it was a man's direct speech, it was musical, and it, it had like a, a wave of vibration, like in the spirit. It was like three in one. I don't know if I've ever described this in a long, not in a long time, but I have to tell it now. And the Lord laid his hands on my head and he said, my son Thomas, I have ordained you and I commission you as my prophet to the nations. Now you have to understand at that time I didn't know what a prophet was. I just got saved last month, a couple of weeks back. I just got saved. <laughs> People are crying in here, bless you. Oh, the Spirit of God is really... Lift your hands. This is, this is rich. This is amazing right now. Seeing people in the audience just weeping right now. This is just. And when he touched my head, when his hand touched my head, it was like fire went through me. It filled me to the tips of my bottom of my feet. And he said some other things I won't say now. But, and he was gone. He just walked back into the world where, where, he, where he came from. The world of glory just walked right back out. And I was back to myself and I thought, that was amazing. I know it just happened, but well, how? How? What? Prophet, prophets in the nations. Really? <laughs> If we need to switch, I will. The Lord began to manifest that right away. I just got saved from a world. I told you I was a rock singer in the world. Nobody in our family was born again. Nobody on either side that we could trace back as far as you could look. Somebody be sitting in their car in Nairobi, Kenya. In the afternoon, about 3 o'clock, when the hot sun was blazing. And then just feel a wave of the spirit just enter the car. And then pick up a recorder and just begin to speak. And for an hour and a half, nonstop, of details of things for a nation. And then it becomes this book right here. And this is only volume one. I'm still looking for volume two. If I don't find it, sorry, I, have to, I hope God can re revisit me. We had a lot of warfare in our journey here, uh, to say the least. And, uh, but it, it became 250 pa a 250 page book of 250 prophecies for the nation. How do, you, how do you imagine something like that could happen? Just out of nowhere, out of the clear blue sky, as, as we would say. And phew, here it is. This is only volume one. I haven't told anybody that. I hope to God I could find that recording by the way, it was on CD. Uh, pastor, my, pa my dear pastor in the back. Uh, the Lord told me to change your name from Mama to Pastor this week. Lift your hands, Mama. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up. The Lord says he's ordaining you as a pastor in this house. So be it. We can have a formal thing later, but right now it's, it's released right now in Jesus' name. Pastor. You, you all can call her that from now. Pastor, Pastor Janet. And at times you're going to get the mic and you're going to preach, Mama. And the fire, is gonna, the fire that's on me is going to come out of you. 
Knock people out. Get ready. I saw it in the vision. How many years we've been knowing each other? I've never said anything like that to you. Because God has a time. But you're not only ready, you're more than ready. You've been ready. You've been faithful. You're the most faithful person. The Lord said he's going to use you. So I'm reminded, uh, I, I want to have a, an evangelism department. And I want to get the soul winning uh, uh, writing script that people can just carry it with them. And I'm going to make those available. We're going to give them out free of charge. I'll never take a dollar or a shilling from you for that. I will never. If you support the ministry, pour it into the World Missions account. But for that, it's free forever, freely, freely for the gospel. I don't care about the printing. I'll print. If I have to print a million sheets, I'll do it with my own pocket. I, I don't care. You can't pay for that. But this is a thing that, but you can support the ministry. Don't get me wrong, okay? Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Many people, you need to so big right now because God has something so big for you in the head. And I heard the Lord saying again, a special 2020 seed. I want to challenge everyone in Kenya to do that, a 2020 seed. And you might add a zero or two zeros to it. All right? 2020, 2020 shillings would be the entrance on that, okay? And I want you to believe God to do that, everybody. Even today, you can start doing it today. You could do by a pesa. You can do it here in the house of God. You can connect uh, with us. You can do it online. In America, it would be $2,020. In Europe, 2,020 euros. So I think people in Kenya, because of the 100 to 1, you could add a zero. <laughs> that would be noble, wouldn't it? 20,020. Do it. And watch God. How many believe for wealth, creation, and transition, and creation, and manifestation, and transfer in abundance to you this year? Because you've heard God in your heart about having it, but you didn't get enough of it yet. But I tell you, that day is coming. Lift your hands. Let's pray over that. So you need to sow. Everybody that sows that seed, I'm going to send you a copy of The Benefits of Excellence, a book I wrote, a really great book. And I want to, if you're here in the house or you're here in the city of Nairobi, I want to sign a, a copy and pray over your life when I see you face to face. But I also have it in digital where I can uh, send it to you online, even by WhatsApp. If I see your seed, I'll click the book to you in WhatsApp, and you can open it, you can print it, you can download it, you can read it over and over. It's a wonderful book, and I'm going to be doing that with many other books that, that we're writing coming up. But I, I, I have this uh, soul-winning script, and it says, like, did you know, you can tell somebody, like, even if you're nervous to witness to somebody, you can use it. You just read it. Do you know God has a great, do you know God loves you and has a great plan for your life? Someone's going to go, oh, really? Oh, yeah, I already know that. No, no, don't, don't worry about the answer. Keep going. And then if you died today or even right now, I, do you know where you're going? Are you sure? 99% of people will say they're not sure. Many people say they're not sure. Somebody that's really saved say, yeah, I'm already saved. And once you're convinced of that, say, okay, now uh, I don't need to pray salvation for you. But I, what I need to do is I need to get you connected with me, and you can have these soul-winning scripts, and you can take them to people. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Because you're already saved, so we're not. But how many people don't really know where they're going? Now here's another thing. The only thing we can take with us when we leave earth is people. Lift your hands. You can't take your stuff. You saw the guy in Africa that had a lot of money. From where he got it, who knows? Funny things and everything else. Probably. And he said he wanted to bribe God six million or six billion or something like that if he'd take him into heaven. God doesn't need your money. It'll be buried with you. Remember the one that said uh, something in a lie to the Holy Ghost and fell dead. Give me a little more volume if you can. I feel like I'm pushing too much. And then the Wife heard later, was it who died first, Ananias or Sapphira? Ananias. The guy died first. Boy, he's the head, so I guess he has to go first. That's better, thank you. And then he says, the ones who carried and buried your husband will now carry and bury you. 
So once you did, you can't take it with you. You've got to be right on this side before you go to that side. And there's only one way, it's through Jesus. So I think we've really neglected our responsibility in that, and I feel bad about it. I don't know about you, but I do. And if I can't go up to everyone in my time and do that to everybody, or I can't have an outdoor crusade all the time where I'm going to just preach a salvation message like Billy Graham did or Reinhard Bonnke did, bless his heart, bless their hearts, they've gone on to heaven now. Uh, then I want to have an army of people that are doing it because that's all going to be credit to all of our accounts. Praise the Lord. So let's say we shoot for a million souls. Can we do that as a first goal? One million. Praise the Lord. I want that somehow in the record of our ministry. I don't want to go to heaven empty-handed. And I know that I can't do it all myself, but there's an army of people that'll do it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And it's easy. You never know when you'll just meet someone and you just feel that thing switch on inside of you. You know? Tell them about the Lord. And you talk about, I don't know how to talk to them. Do you just have this thing? You could read it. So I, I want to print that. I hope I can print it this week and have it for next week. I really hope we can and start to give those out. Lift your hands, let's pray over that. Evangelism. Could you imagine people that you walk past and if they were to be lost in eternity, how much of a tragedy that is? And you can't go back and undo it. And as busy as you are now, you can't make an excuse and say, well, Lord, I was busy, you understand? Say, no, but the person died lost. That shouldn't have happened. Crank me a little more, I need a little more. It shouldn't have happened. Thank God, even on my Facebook page, my relatives are watching. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and, they're, and they're getting the gospel. My whole family. I preach to them. We, we had a house in, in Pennsylvania in the mountains. We drive from New York. It's a two hour and a half drive. So I thought, we're all in this car together. I got gotcha. you. Praise the Lord. Two hours, my time. You can't say I got something else to do. I'm tired of hearing it. Talk to the hand because the face ain't trying to hear it. You can't switch me off. We didn't have earbuds back then. This is a long time ago. Many, many years ago, okay? And then I preached from Genesis to Revelation in the car. Under the anointing, they heard the word. And then I led my grandfather to the Lord. Someone say praise the Lord. Then I led my grandmother to the Lord. Someone say praise the Lord. And then my father, he got ill. He was on his deathbed. Didn't know uh, what was going to happen. And he accepted the Lord. Wow. And my mom. For years after my mom died, I didn't hear anything about it. But uh, years later, not good. Years later. Not, uh, not recently, not soon, that's the word, not soon after it happened, but years later, uh, in fact, I think it was last year, uh, prophetically, I'm already in 2020, praise the Lord, where am I at, what am I doing here, I'm already there, I'm saying last year, I mean, it's still this year for a few more days, three more days, or four more days, okay, until Tuesday night. And I'll be shouting prophetically in Kampala, Uganda, in a great conference there on Tuesday night. That's where I'll be. Wow. Praise the Lord, somebody. God just arranged it that way. I, he knows what he's doing. He's the boss. So anybody that has friends in Kampala, Uganda, you're watching in Kampala, the Kampala area, I'm going to put a flyer on the social media. You're going to find out where the meeting is. You need to get there for me to pray for you. Something's going to happen for your life. That's going to be beyond description. I think it was early this year, which soon will be last year. The Lord spoke to me and said, son, your mother cried out to me really deeply before she had her final moment. And she's with me now. I cried the whole rest of the day. Oh my. When I heard my mother was very ill, I was stuck in Africa on a mission. 
And one afternoon, I was in the car. I was in the city, and I was sitting in the car. The Lord touched me so deeply, and I just began to weep, and I couldn't stop. But she wasn't dead yet. But three days later, she was. That was it. It was the end. And I was wondering. I didn't get to have time with her. I'm gone. I'm out here in the world. I didn't get to go back and see her. I didn't get to do it. I felt so bad. I felt so grieved. And for the Lord to come and speak that to me, Wow. I said, wow. Some of you are like, yeah. can you lift your hands and thank you? It's the greatest thing to know that your people got saved and they're in heaven. Yes. Whoa, what could be better than that? I know you like the Ferraris and all that crap. <laughs> and the big houses and all that crap. I like them too. I can't fit in the Ferrari. It's not for me. It's too small. But there are other big cars that I like that are expensive. And I've had many, and I'll have, I'll have more. So what? What happens to a human soul when they get to their last breath and whatever they had in this world or not doesn't matter anymore? Only the state of their condition of their soul, are they saved or not? It's important. In fact, it's more than important. Important is a cheap word. Important doesn't even describe it. Are you learning anything? A few months ago, I had a dream, a prophetic dream, and, I, and you know a prophetic dream by how vivid it is to you in your mind right now. A, a flesh dream, a head dream, a subconscious dream, a conscious mind dream will evaporate, kind of disappear. You might remember a little bit about it. You ever woke up from a dream and all of a sudden you don't remember it? Like five minutes later, you forgot almost the whole thing and you wish you'd stopped and went to write it all down and all the details seem to evaporate into thin air. Are they gone? A prophetic dream is not like that. It's like a video that you just hit play and it's in full technicolor, HD, 4K, whatever, 5K. You just, you see it again. In the dream, I saw Reinhard Bonnke, the great evangelist. He was standing behind a counter, and I told this story before. I'll tell it again, I'm sure. But he, uh, he was about to cross over to the other side, and I knew he was going to pass soon. And he did a couple of weeks back, finally. But um, he was done, finished his course, ran his race. It was, it was okay for him to go. He, 79 years old, 77 million souls documented through his ministry, saved, born again. That's a good life. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. 60 years of preaching full time in the ministry. From a young man, 18 years old, to 79, 61, 60 years. That's a good life. So I saw him in the dream, I, and I, and I, I kind of knew once I woke up and processed the dream that he was going to cross over. But in the dream, I heard my mother's voice. She was on the other side of a wall. I didn't see her. And I, it's a little detail that I never told last time. I didn't tell it last time because I was a little bit too flipped out about it to tell it. But the Lord wants me to tell it now. I don't know why I had. She had her dog with her. Yeah. This little Jack Russell Terrier that she liked, that she had, it used to annoy the daylights out of me. <laughs> that little yapping thing. I used to kick my foot at it and say, get away from me. Well, I couldn't do it while the family was looking. I'd be like, Phew, shut up, making so much noise. Then I, I'd be upstairs in the house, and I'd take a brush or a bottle or something, and I'd bang it on top of the dresser like that. And the dog would hear it and go, go off. I'd sound the alarm in, this, in the town, in the city. Pew, 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 start screaming. And I could just make him do it. I'd just go bang, bang, bang. He'd start barking. I, I used to do it just to annoy everybody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's like I had a button, a remote control. I could make that thing make noise, you know. This dog was with my mom in the dream. I was like, come on, Lord. <laughs> Lift your hands. <laughs> then we had a cat. We had a cat. He was a boy, but he got named the girl's name. I don't know how that happened. My little sister, she named him Ruby. The dog's, the cat's, the, she, the cat's name was Ruby. And it was a beautiful gray cat. It had the most softest fur. And any time the anointing would manifest in the house, Ruby would come running to where the anointing was. 
That cat was in love with the Holy Ghost. I don't know what. He, he, had, he had a sensation, and he would put his back up, like arch his back up in the air, and start purring and shaking his hand like that. And I'd lay hands on that cat, and I tell you before God, I felt the power of God flowing through my hands, like I'm laying hands on somebody. And he would fall over like that. Wow. And lay there with his, like this. Dozens and dozens of times I laid hands on that cat. Do you know that cat lived to be 21 years old and never got sick? Wow. Lift your hands. Cats don't live to 21. You see a cat that's 21, all their fur's falling out, they're blind, <laughs> they got diabetes, come on, somebody. They got high blood pressure, they, 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 one leg is stuck. You know, they're gonna walk like that, and they're like, no, they can't even meow like this, like, no. <laughs> If you ever heard a sick cat try to meow, it, it meow, it's a very sad thing. It'll make you cry. <laughs> but he, not him. Not him. He was strong. And then my family told me, because I had already, I was already traveling the world. They said, uh, uh, Ruby is gone. I was like, ah, oh, I couldn't tell him. I'm going to see him again. Praise the Lord. So if, if my mom could have that yapping dog, how many know I could have my cat Ruby back? <laughs> and Ruby used to talk. Ruby used to talk. If I, if I was making coffee or cereal, which I don't eat anymore. You know you put milk on the cereal? I haven't had cereal in 20 years, bless God. I don't even know what it is. I don't know. I lost the touch for that. But when we were younger, we, we didn't have that. Pour milk, pull a milk carton out, and Ruby would run up and put his, le his paws up on the thing like he's trying to climb up on top of the counter to get at it. And I'd say, hey, Ruby, you want some milk? And he would go, yeah, yeah. That cat could talk. Praise God. He would say, yeah. The heavenly world is so amazing. Everything will be there in perfect, in perfect form. But in hell, everything will be in the form of absolute despair. Lift your hands. Let's pray for souls right now. You know, I had this thought hit me. Like when I first came to Kenya, people maybe think Kenyans were nice. I found out otherwise, by the way. A lot of ones that aren't nice. In fact, ones that are so full of the devil, I wonder who's the devil, them or the devil. But I used to think, evangelism has come here. Colonialism, missionary work has come here. The gospel, it's a supposedly a Christian nation. They say 70% of Kenyans are uh, evangelized or, or believe in Jesus. I thought, but how many are walking with him? Not 70%, maybe 7% if you're lucky. So I used to think, how could you evangelize for souls in a place that's been like evangelized over and over, church culture? You know people here that fornicate, adulterate, drink, lie, steal, and kill, and con all week long, and they still go to church on Sunday morning. How many know what I'm talking about? Even the prostitutes go to church. Lift don't get quiet now. Come on now. <laughs> Lift your hands. They go to church. They'll go to church on Sunday morning. They'll be there. They have this hidden secret life that they know Jesus somehow. But he's in their little compartment somewhere, you know. But don't tell them they don't know the gospel. I remember Beyonce, right? She grew up in church. And she says, don't tell me I'm not saved. Well, she's doing a lot of things that are con very contrary and untoward. But you can't tell her she don't know God. Elvis even loved God. Elvis is in heaven, by the way. Elvis was in such despair and grievance of disobeying the call of God, going into the world to become the king when he was supposed to serve the king, that it ate him up. And he fell dead at 42 years old in August of 1977. I forget the day it was. August 16th, I think it was, 7, 1977. He fell dead in his bathroom. Couldn't live anymore. Exploded. Too many drugs, too many... And every day he would cry out to God. 
he do the concert, you know, with the big thing, come out, Elvis has left the building. Da 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 he'd be out. The music, and then Elvis has left the building. The king was here and gone. He'd go up into his hotel suite and begin to cry and tell these friends of his to begin to sing gospel songs to soothe his soul because he loved God inside of himself. Elvis Presley is the poster boy in history for the one who saved his life and lost it. Jesus said, if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it again. But if you try to retain your life against my will, you'll lose it. So Elvis died young and miserable, but he fell dead and went to heaven because the love he had for God was there more than anything else that had even killed him physically at a young age. So when you get to heaven, you, you might have an experience, you'll hear somebody, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Lord, thank you very much, you know, he's that. And man, when that guy sang, how great thou art, you'd be crying, I don't care who you were. Like the touch of God that came upon that Beatle, the, the Beatles song, the Christmas song that did, just a touch of God on that. Now, John Lennon was in another place, and I hope, I. His life was taken for him, from him just like that. Yeah, but who, who was able to witness to him? Do you know, I have a friend in ministry, he's, a, he's an Englishman, and um, we became close friends. He came to America to set up his ministry in America, and I helped him with a lot of things. I helped him find his house, I helped him find his, got all his phone numbers, his P.O. box. I got these really savvy 800 numbers that had his ministry name in it. I did all that for him, I did a lot of things. Helped him shopping for the house, a lot of things. And uh, nobody knew about that, but God did. And I, I was there for a season to do that for him. Was not a part of his ministry. I had my own ministry. I just did it as a friend. Wasn't there to be in his church. There was nobody in his church. I was a friend of him. Just a friend, personal friend. That's it. 